Hello and welcome to your first mini lecture. In a minute I'm going to go to the board and work some problems from the problem set in your book. But as you watch this video, what you want to do is write the problems down as you see them, pause the video before I do the solution, work the problem out yourself, and then compare my solution uh, that I do on the video with the solution that you have. It turns out that in courses like this, where video is the main method of instruction, those students that stop the video and rewind the video from time to time are the students that do better in the course. So there's a correlation between the way in which you watch these videos and your success in the course. Okay, let's look at our first problem. We want to translate the sum of x and 5 is 2. Okay, so we know that sum always means addition. So the sum of x and 5 is going to be x plus 5. And the word is translates into equal. So sum of x plus, the sum of x and 5 is 2. So in symbols, that's the translation of this sentence uh, written in English. OK, let's simplify these expressions right here. 3 times 5 plus 4. The rule for order of operation tells us that we want to do multiplication before we do addition. So 3 times 5 is 15 plus 4, and that will be 19. In this case, we have 3 times the quantity 5 plus 4, and so the rule for order of operation also tells us to work inside the parentheses first. So this is going to be 3 times 5 plus 4 is 9. I don't actually need those parentheses right there. So 3 times 9, 27. And down here, 3 times 5 plus 3 times 4. OK, we want to do multiplication left to right before we do addition. So this will be 15 plus 12. And that will also be 27. So as we get to the properties of numbers, you'll find that this is no coincidence. 3 times the quantity 5 plus 4 is always the same as 3 times 5 plus 3 times 4. And that's called the distributive property. We'll see that a little later. Here's another problem. I uh, want to simplify this expression. So first I'm going to do multiplication left to right. So I'm going to say 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Here I'll write that as subtract 2 times negative 16. That will be negative 32 and then plus 1 times 9, which is 9. So 1 times 9 and 9 are the same thing. 1 is what we call the multiplicative identity. If you multiply a number by 1, it never changes its value. So we can either put the 1 there or not put it there, either way. OK, so then this is going to be negative 2. Now, uh, subtracting a negative 32 is the same as adding positive 32. So I'm going to change this to plus 32 plus 9. And so what do we have? Negative 2 plus 32. I'm going to add the subtract left to right. So negative, negative 2 plus 32 is positive 30 plus 9. That will be 39. Next, let's find the value of each of these expressions when x is equal to 5. So that's simply a substitution problem. So I'm going to substitute in here 5 for x. So 5 plus 2. I'll end up with 7. Here I have 2 times x, so that's 2 times 5. That will be 10. Here I have x to the second power, so that'll be 5 to the second power, which is 5 times 5, or 25. And then 2 to the x power, my variable here, x is the exponent, so this will be 2 raised to the fifth power. And if you work that out, that will be 32. So 32, 25 there, 10 there and 7 there. OK, so find the value of these expressions when x is equal to 5. I end up with those results. Let's go to the next board, and I'll work a few more problems. OK, here we want to simplify by applying the distributive property. So I'm going to multiply 1 third times the quantity 4x plus 6. So when I do that, I'm going to distribute the 1 third over those two terms in that expression 4x plus 6. So I have 1 third times 4x plus, there's my plus sign right there, 1 third times 6. So 1 third times 4x plus 1 third times 6. So if I multiply 1 third times 4x, I can write this a number of different ways, but let's just write that as 4 thirds x, 
and then over here, one third times six is two. So one third times six is two, one third times four x is going to be four thirds x, so I end up with this. Now I could write this as four x over three, that would be okay too, but I just like it with a coefficient there, four thirds x, but you should know that four thirds x and four x over three are exactly the same thing. Um, multiplying by one third and dividing by three are the same thing. Okay, here's another distributive property. Uh, let's multiply this 100 times 0.06x plus and then 100 times 0.07y. So that will be 100 times 0.06x plus 100 times 0.07y. So when I multiply 100 times 0 0.06, 6 hundredths, 100 times 100 is going to be just 6. So this ends up to be 6x plus 100 times 0 0.07 is going to be 7, so I'm going to get 7y. So what's inside here when I do that, I'm not showing that step, but it's the associative property. So instead of grouping these two together, I group these two together because it's all multiplication, and 100 times 0 0.07 is just 7. So there's the associative property in there both here and here, but I'm not showing it. Now, this is a good problem to pay attention to because this will end up being one of the solutions or one of part of the solution to some of the application problems that we're going to see later on. Okay, how about 5a plus 7 plus 8a plus a? Well, by the um, commutative property, I'm going to rearrange these so that all my terms with the variable in them are together and the term without the variable is by itself. Okay, so 5a plus 8a plus how many a? 1a plus 7. So let me just put a little 1 in here. So you can see when I take these, when I factor out this a or I use the distributive property in reverse, I end up here with 5 plus 8 plus 1 times a plus 7. Now you don't have to show that step, but you know, you can just say, well, 5a plus 8a plus 1a is going to be the same as 5 plus 8 plus 1. As long as you think that way, it's fine. But that's really a distributive property if I show all the steps. And let's see, what does this come out to be? 5 uh, and 8 is going to be 13 plus 1 is 14. a plus 7. So that's how that simplifies. Okay, so... Here we have the distributive property in one direction like this, and then the key to working this problem is the commutative property. I rearrange the order, and then I use the distributive property in reverse to write that A outside of each of the terms that it appears in. You can always check this by multiplying A times each of these and seeing that you get what you started with right there. Okay, let's work a couple more problems. All right, another problem here to simplify, and we have 10 subtract 4 times this quantity minus this quantity right here. So to start things off, I'm going to simplify a little bit by putting a 1 right here, just so we see that that coefficient is 1. Now, we have to do our multiplications left to right before we do addition and subtraction, so it would be a mistake to subtract these two numbers right here at first. We have to do multiplication, and I see multiplication here and multiplication right here. Now, because subtraction is addition of the opposite, what I'm going to do is think of this as 10 plus a negative 4 times this plus a negative 1 times this. So that when I do that, I end up with this 10. And now I'm going to multiply, but I'm going to take the negative sign with the 4 when I multiply. So negative 4 times 2x, negative 8x. And then negative 4 times positive 1, negative 4. I'm going to do the same thing to this expression. I'm going to take the negative 1 with me when I multiply, minus 3x, and then negative 1 times negative 4, positive 4. So I end up with 10, subtract 8x, subtract 4, subtract 3x, plus 4. Now I'm going to just add similar terms, so negative 8x and negative 3x, negative 11x, and then 10 plus negative 4 is going to be 6, plus positive 4 is going to be 10. So this is going to be plus 10. Or I could say negative 4 plus positive 4 is equal to 8, because addition is commutative, so I could change the order of those things and end up with this. Okay, so negative 11x plus 10 is the result. I skipped a few steps in here, but really 
This is all the work that you need to show on a problem like this. And the key to working this problem successfully is to use the rule for order of operation and don't subtract before you multiply. Multiply first, then you can do addition and subtraction left to right. Okay, another problem. If A is equal to this set and B is this set right here, let's find A union B. So the union of these two sets, A and B, that's going to be everything that I see in both those sets. So I want to combine these two sets together to find the union. So I'm going to have to have all these numbers. So what's that? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. Okay? So I end up with everything that I see when I take the union. Now when I take the intersection of the two sets, it's just like the intersection of a couple of streets. It's just the part they have in common. So what elements are in this set and also in this set right here? Well, let's see. Zero is only here. 2 is in both sets, 4 is in both sets, 6 is only here. 1 is just here, 2, 4, it looks like it's just going to be the set 2, 4. So when I look at union and intersection, for union I'm thinking of um, everything that's in A or B or both, and when I look at the intersection of two sets, I'm thinking of the word and. So for union, it's everything that you see, and for and, it's only the common part. So union and intersection, or and and, everything, just what they have in common. Okay, so there's our little mini lecture for the first section of this book, and I want to remind you that you want to be sort of uh, active as you watch these videos. Don't be afraid to stop the video, work a problem out for yourself, and then compare your solution with my solution. Remember, people that do that, students that do that in a course like this where video is the main method of instruction, those students seem to do better in the class overall.